Hi everyone, today we are going to talk about underwater seal drainage. So this is an intrapleural drainage system used after some intrathoracic operations or procedures. This is an airtight chest drain in which one or more chest catheters are held in the pleural space either through a posterior or anterior um, axillary line by a suture attached to the chest wall for the purpose of draining fluid or gas from the uh, thoracic cavity. It is usually inserted in the 5th or 60th intercostal space. Purpose of underwater seal drainage To remove air and liquids such as pus, blood or fluids that has accumulated in the thoracic cavity. Post thoracotomy following operations on the heart, lungs, iota and esophagus. This is done to let excess air escape and thus facilitating lung expansion. Indications for underwater seal drainage Emphysema, prera effusion, pneumothorax, hemothorax, hemoneumothorax, atelectasis, chest injury, flouches. Complications of underwater seal drainage Blockage of the tube, respiratory distress, infection at the site of insertion of the tube, hemothorax, atelectasis, hypostatic pneumonia, dislodgement of the tube. Nursing management of a patient with underwater seal drainage. Immediately after the procedure, position the patient in upright position to aid in full lung expansion and allow easy drainage from the pleural cavity. Once the patient is in bed, attach the drainage tube, that is, the tube from the patient, if using a single bottle system, to the tubing that leads to the long glass tube that ends up under sterile water at least 2.5 to 5 centimeters. Do post-operative observations of vital signs to detect an abnormality such as severe bleeding and respiratory distress. Observations should also include breathing, cyanosis and symptoms of hemorrhage. If abnormalities occur, report immediately to the surgeon as this may indicate tension pneumothorax, mediastinal shift and hemorrhage that require immediate surgery. Give psychological care to the patient by uh, carefully explaining the procedure procedure that has been done and why it is important to him. When the patient is in lateral position, place sandbags on each side of the tube of the tubing to protect it from the patient's weight and prevent blockage. Fasten the tubing to the draw sheet so that the flow by gravit may occur and to prevent dislodgement of the tube. The tubing should be long enough so as not to interfere with the movement of the patient in bed. This also prevents pain caused by traction pressure and easy dislodgement of the tube. Mark the origin of fluids level with tape on the outside of the drainage border and mark the increments hourly in order to observe fluid loss and determine the amount of fluid or blood to replace. Ensure that there are fluctuations or oscillations of the fluid level in the long glass tube during respirations. This indicates effective communication between the pleural cavity and the drainage bottle. Fluctuations will stop when the lungs has expanded fully, the tubing is blocked by, by or a clothes, dependent loops have developed or coiling, the suction motor is not working properly. Encourage deep breathing and coughing exercises because this remove fluids that have accumulated in the pleural cavity. Stabilize the drainage bottle on the floor in a special holder for the protection of the bottle. The drainage bottle should always be lower than the level of the patient's chest to prevent um, backflow of fluid or air in the pleural space. When the apparatus is damaged, clamp the tube near the chest to prevent disruption of the negative pressure created in the pleural cavity. Always keep a clamp in a receiver on the patient's locker where it is easy to access and instruct the patient on where to clamp in case the apparatus is damaged. Perform other nursing care as needed such as bathing, feeding, ambulation, etc.